Hello, hello, hello. Today is Monday, November 18, 2024. Here follow Keith Norman's solution to problem 216. Remember when I posted this problem, I mentioned that if any one of you have spent some time on problem 213, 214 and 215, then this problem is a piece of cake. And I mentioned that if not at least 12 people are willing to spend some time on it, then I will stop doing any problems on nuclear physics. Since there are only seven who have all answers correct, I will no longer post any problems on nuclear physics. So here follow Keith Norman's solutions. So here you see a fusion reaction, lithium plus deuterium gives two nuclei of helium-4. Although this is about fusion, not fission, I, and I means Keith because he wrote this, I use the same approach as for problem 215. I compare initial and final binding energies. I looked up the binding energies per nucleon for lithium-6, for deuterium and for helium-4. I then calculate binding energies per nucleus, so the lithium-6 he must multiply by 6, the deuterium he must multiply by 2 and the helium-4 he must multiply by 4. Does the total binding energy increased by this amount? Look closely what it was before and what it is after, and then you see it has increased by 22.4 MeV. Thus about 22.4 MeV, let's call it delta E, is released as energy which is mostly heat. If you want to express it in terms of mass loss, delta M, you can use Einstein's equation. You see that there. Part B. From problem 215, the fission on one uranium-235 nucleus releases about 168 MeV. So fission of one uranium-235 nucleus produces 168 divided by 22.38 as much energy or about seven and a half times as much energy than the fusion of one lithium-6 and one deuterium nucleus. However, to make a fair comparison, you have to compare masses. Thus, the same number of nucleons of uranium-235, you have to compare with the same number of nucleons in lithium-6 and in deuterium. The same number of nuclei in lithium-6 and deuterium have a mass of only 8 grams. One mole uranium-235, 235 grams. Thus, for uranium-235, delta E per nucleon is about 0.75. 0.715 MeV. But for lithium-6 and deuterium, it is about 2.8 MeV. It is more. Thus the energy release per unit mass on the left side is about 3.9 times higher than the energy release per unit mass on the right side, uranium-235. So, fusion is more effective. Looking at Walter's original diagram, see below, of binding energy per nucleon as a function of atomic mass, number of problem 213, 
you can see that the curve is much steeper on the left side, which is here, which is the fusion area, than on the right side, which is here, which is the fission area. So fusion in general gives more energy than fission. Because look, incredible increase of binding energy per nucleon compared to this. With Keith's permission, I have added a few paragraphs to his excellent solution. Here are my few paragraphs. The energy source of all stars is nuclear fusion, where the immense pressure and temperature in the star's core forces hydrogen atoms to fuse together, creating helium and releasing a tremendous amount of energy that makes the star shine. The energy source of a hydrogen bomb, also called a thermonuclear bomb, is also nuclear fusion, where the nuclei of hydrogen isotopes like deuterium and tritium are combined together under extreme heat and pressure, releasing a massive amount of energy. This fusion reaction is triggered by the initial explosion of a smaller fission bomb within the weapon itself, creating the necessary conditions for fusion to occur. Hydrogen bombs are significantly stronger than uranium-235 bombs, with the potential to be about a thousand times more powerful. Fusion power reactors will generate electricity by using heat from nuclear fusion reactions. Research into fusion reactors began already in the 1940s. But as of today, 2024, no device has reached net power. Net power means that the power out is larger than the power in. Nuclear fusion reactors may not even happen in your life. Now Keith continues, the third part, is this reaction possible? And the answer is no, this reaction cannot happen. The initial binding energy of beryllium-7 is 37.6 MeV, but the binding energy of helium-3 is 7.8 and it is 28.3 for helium-4. So the final binding energy is 36.1 MeV which is less than the initial binding energy of 37.6. So this cannot happen. Nuclear reactions only occur if there is an increase in binding energy, not a decrease. All right, I do not know what I will post for problem 217, but it will be on classical mechanics. So this is the last problem on nuclear physics.